Welcome to the Time Bench, where synthetic and natural materials merge to make magic. Today, we're going to create a fly to catch bluegill. So let's get started. The materials we're going to use for this fly, well, before I tell you the materials, maybe I ought to tell you what we're going to tie. We're going to tie a fly that has a very interesting name, the Briminator. You might be able to guess what we're going to go after. Bluegill, brim, as it's called in the south, or some people just call it perch. But in this case, it's bluegill or any panfish that swims in a pond in the Midwest. We're going to use an interesting material called a dubbing brush. Now what this really is, is I've taken some really fine wire and I've made a loop and put dubbing in it and then twisted it. So I've got a wire core with just synthetic dubbing twisted into it. And you can purchase these from fly shops or you can make your own. I like making my own. And what you've done is you've created a very durable chenille made of whatever color of dubbing or whatever style of dubbing you like to use. In this case, I'm using an Antron style dubbing. It has a lot of sparkle in it and it repels water. So it's going to create little gas bubbles along the body, which we're very interested in doing. I'm also going to be using a feather off of a pheasant, a ringneck pheasant, this particular feather, the, the church window feather. And you'll notice this pheasant has a an, kind of an unusual color to it. It's green. It's been dyed green. It's not the natural color. You can tie this fly in any variation of colors from green to brown to orange to red to yellow, whatever you like to do. But just keep your body color and your feather color consistent. We're also going to be using the mustad hook and this in this particular case I'm using a circle hook and it's a streamer style hook but it's only a 1x long that means the hook shank right here is only 1x long it's a little bit shorter and we're using a size 10 and this of course is the the mustad signature series hooks I really like these they're very sharp and the beauty of the circle streamer is once you get a fish on this hook they're not going to get off and in addition to that, we're going to be using some bead chain, good old fashioned bead chain, like you used to find on the old plugs in the bathtubs. Uh, this is a, is a small size, and in this particular case, it's gold. I always like the gold for, for this particular fly, but you can use silver, black, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to imitate uh, the insect, or if you want to add flash, like the, I am with the gold. Now, let's get started. I'm also going to be using a 12 aught euro thread in olive. I just really like the finer threads, so I find myself using more the, the finer diameter threads. You can use anything up to, to an 8 aught or a 6 aught successfully with this fly. What you want to do is get your thread started right behind the hook. Get it fastened on just by wrapping over itself a few times and cut off the excess. And always when you're working with bead chain, what I have found, instead of cutting off the two eyes that you want to use, leave them attached to the bead chain. And take a little bit of, of super glue or, or a super glue type glue, a fast acting glue, especially one that works under pressure. And I like the gel style as opposed to the liquid because it kind of stays in place where you want it. But you can, you know, if you've got the liquid, use it too. That's fine. Then I'll lay my my dumbbell, or I mean my bead chain eyes on, and I'll make a couple of loops and kind of get it fastened into place. Then cut it. Much easier to work with. Just take a pair of wire cutters and snip, and you've got your bead chain eyes already started. Now you might ask, you know, what are we trying to represent here that the bluegill are going to go after? Well, generally in ponds or impoundments where you fish for bluegill or brim or whatever you like to call them, you're going to find in the slower water an insect called a damselfly and an insect called a dragonfly, both of which have fairly large eyes. So that's something they kind of key in on. In this case, we're going to really be creating something that looks more like a damselfly. Now, when I mentioned the pheasant feather, I'm going to show that to you again. You'll notice on the side of the feather here, you have some very webby material, and then you've got 
what we call the church window area of the feather here. We're going to be using this webbing material on the side for the tail, and then we're going to be using this church window portion of the feather for the leg. So one feather is going to take care of all of our needs. Now let's take our thread all the way to the back and wrap it on back, and I'm going to bring my old man eyes around here where I can see better. And bring my thread straight to the back. Now, when I say to the back, I mean, of course, towards the bend of the hook. And I'm going to stop where the bend begins, which is really, if you think about it, directly above where the barb of the hook would be if you could see it. In fact, let me move this hook out just a little bit, and you'll be able to see where that barb is. It's right there. And usually the barb is directly below where the bend begins. Now I'm going to move it back so it'll be on camera. I'm sure the cameraman really appreciated that. I'm going to stop right there. And then I'm going to take my little window, a church window, pheasant feather. By the way, there's a second feather here that's behind the main feather. This is called a phyllo plume. You can use the phyllo plume for that tail as well. And in fact, you'll find a lot of fly patterns that call for the phyllo plume hackles. They also are a good substitute for ostrich hackle if you don't have one. But I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the actual fibers off the side of the feather like I mentioned. And I'm just simply going to take my thumb and index finger and just rip some right off of the side. So I've just got a little bundle of them right here between my thumb and index finger. And then I'm going to tie them in. I'm going to pinch them together. Use the pinch method to fasten them to the hook. What we have is a very sparse, oh, pulled off some of them, I'm going to retie on, very sparse tail. And that's what we're looking for, very sparse. We don't want a lot of tail on this guy. The damselfly actually do, doesn't have a tail, but it has three appendages that stick out the back that look kind of like little individual feathers or oars or paddles. And those are not really a tail. Those are actually its gills. I always found that rather humorous to imagine. You know, the damselfly, you, you've heard of nose breathers and mouth breathers. Well, he's a butt breather, I guess. Posterior breather, I guess, politically correct way of pronouncing that or saying that. Now, oops, I need to lock in my hook. Now, I fastened in the dubbing brush right there where I tied in the tail. And then I'm going to take my dubbing brush and I'm just going to start wrapping it. And remember, this dubbing brush has a wire core. So that's going to add a little bit extra weight, a little bit more durability, which is very, very important when you're fishing for bluegill. Those little guys have teeth. And those teeth can really make a mess of a fly. By adding that bit of extra bit of durability to this fly by using a wire cord dubbing brush, you're going to guarantee that you'll be able to catch a few more fish on the same fly. Now I've wrapped it behind it and I've wrapped in front of it with a few wraps of thread and I'm just going to cut off the excess. And notice I'm using wire cutters and not scissors because of the fact that it has a, a wire core. Now, don't throw away your brush because we're going to need it at the front again, but right now what we want to do is tie in our church window feather. I'm going to strip away a lot of this fuzzy stuff to where this is what I've got left. Then I'm going to tie that in right behind those bead eyes. And then I'm going to come around and I'm going to trap that same stem in front of the bead eyes. And there's two reasons for that. One, I need the thread there for the next step afterwards. And two, these stems are kind of slick. And if you don't really get them trapped down good, when you go to wrap the hackle, you could just pull it out. And this just gives you a little bit more surface area that's been trapped with the thread. And I'm going to take a pair of hackle pliers. I think I'll use these old hackle pliers here. I like them. And grab the center stem at the top of that hackle. And I'm going to wrap it around behind the bead eyes just a couple of times. You're only going to get one or two wraps. Oops. You've got to be real careful because these feathers are very fragile and they will break easily. Regrab it there. Ideally, you want that thing to turn and face towards the rear so that the concave shape of the 
hackles will actually sweep back. But if it doesn't, that's okay. You can always work with it. I'm going to need my, my thread back up here behind those eyes to trap that. I should have brought it forward. Always want to leave your thread where you're going to need it next. Now, I won't need it again until I'm in front. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Cut the excess off. Let's go ahead and go back here behind again. Let's sweep these hackles kind of back. What we're creating here is the illusion of legs. These guys are going to really move around a lot in the water and create a nice illusion of legs. Now, we're just going to tie in our brush again one more time right in front of that hackle. Bring our thread forward. Make one wrap behind the bead eyes to come down between the bead eyes and then make a couple of wraps right in front to create that head, that bulky head. And you know, we just about got a fly tied here. All we got to do is cut off our brush. Well, these wire cutters aren't doing a very good job. Throw on a little bit of dubbing wax. Not dubbing wax, I'm sorry. Tying wax. And then whip finish it. And we got to fly. Okay, there we are. The Briminator. Tied in a, dark, in a green, ready to go catch some fish. Hey, uh, you know, we got to take a break and go to Mark's Tippets. We'll be right back.